because German was the official language. <coughs> and in Prague and in the bigger cities, people spoke German even at home to show they were part of the ruling class because really? that, was the, that was the official language. And only in like mid and late 1700s, there was a language scientist who only spoke And uh, now it's at the Cultural Institute of the Italian State. It's still owned by the state of Italy. Oh, okay. Across the street, there's another building, another palace of the nobility, which went to the Castle, the little brilliant French family of the Lobkowitzes. And uh, the Lobkowitz Palace for the past few decades. A movie about how he painted the ghost that fell here. And this one is basically very like much. the first place it's all he had to do. It was, a lot of it had to do with. My life when I was a photojournalist and I was supposed to take his portrait and he came like 20 minutes late or 25 minutes late I was waiting for him and to apologize he <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> That's very good. That's good. I love this man. Uh, yeah. you see him in time you're in Prague. <laughs> so beautifully painted and next time you're in Prague once again don't uh, don't save those two or three euros and pay them for the entrance to the tower. Mm -hmm. The tower has lovely views of this whole neighborhood. Okay. And also that's because that, that's why in the mid part of the tower there is a teeny tiny apartment for a teeny tiny secret communist police agent oh. who was working on top of the tower in the oh. 60s and 70s and 80s taking pictures of everyone visiting the US and the West German wow. embassies. <laughs> uh, it was before Amazing. 
Ah, it's such a beautiful street, isn't it? Interesting how it's kind of like showing how the architecture grew organically. But there's, I've recently read about this house that there was actually a major explosion. Out the wedding, yes, I can see through that door. It's just so beautiful. So if we went further down on the right side there would be the famous Prague church made of baby Jesus of Prague. It's not the one the great. Seventeen hundred the staff are sewing little costumes and basically between them and they would keep Barbie gold dress. They always stayed here. They always, they never left. They never left. A very popular, we're not a very pious nation. So we to the Charles Bridge only to find that this competitor already put his competitors uh. there. So they go furious and say, no, you guys are still paying that because I, this is the order. Like, okay. So they built a statue pillar and they put the statue here and closed the Charles mm -hmm. Bridge and you can see several other statues mm -hmm. which did not. Mm -hmm. They built a tower. Uh. But as you get closer, you start seeing that there's some sort of weird light going on in the church. <laughs> in 1400s, there was a priest in Prague, his name was Jan Hus, and he wrote two playwright here, the director, who was living further down, I'm going to show you in the villa, and he was just walking home from a tram stop, he read the poem, he read and liked it, he memorized it. Next time his performance, he always did this thing, he went in front of the curtain and he talked to the people in the theater, talked to the audience about, you know, things in his life, he's like, there must be a great poet living in my neighborhood who can recite the poem. Can you guess what happened with the poem? Well, people traced that wall and every aspiring poet in Prague came mm. here and scribbled their mostly mediocre poetry on the wall. They, <laughs> the mm. other ones, they even signed it because they wanted to be discovered. Yeah. This never repeated. No one ever read their poems aloud in the theatre. But it was kind of a place to, you know, mm. come and write your poetry. And after and 1968, after the Soviet occupation, this poetry became a bit more political, these poems mm. going to know how the Russians go Mm. Like home. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, writing such poetry in walls was a little dangerous. I don't know if you're familiar with the Life of Brian movie uh, yeah. from Monty Python. Yeah. So the yeah, police would not correct your grammar and force you to write it. <laughs> they would actually beat you up. Really? But okay. here it was actually a bit safer. They couldn't beat you up here because there's a French embassy overlooking this. Uh... And the French diplomats might have taken a picture and, like, that would not look good on the news. Somebody wrote a little poem and was like, beat it up for that. Yeah. So. Um, uh, there was always a place where people went sort of to express some ideas and then 1980 mm. John Lennon gets shot in New York. Mm. Somebody walked across here and there was this stone slab, part of the fort or former like public water fountain. Mm. They wrote John Lennon's name there, they wrote in 1940 to 1980, you know, when people started bringing flowers, burning candles, painting flowers, painting John Lennon's portrait, and this is how it came to be the John Lennon war. And communists were not very happy about that, because, you know, the official color of communism isn't red, it's grey. Okay. Literally everything in this country was grey under mm. including snow, because of mm. all the lightning, East German lightning, mm. all the East German rancid diesels coming here. Mm. Um, but this was like the little piece of mm. color that's like, mm. oh, that's so the commies came, repainted it grey, but it took mm. like five coats of paint and still mm. the colors were seen. So they tr they couldn't fight it, they tried to steal the legacy. They said, John Lennon was for peace. So are we, the communists. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they did a John Lennon Peace Festival here. Yeah. The communists used organization that people just ignored that. They waited for them to leave and you know, started yeah. doing their own thing. So should he feel particularly tempted to contribute? Well, long live Yoko. They need to press really hard. Okay. Almost like calligraphy, but... Yeah. <laughs>
I'm seriously buying you one. It looks like that. No, I know, of course. I'm I need to get a spray can. I need to get a spray can. Yeah, spray can would be a good idea. At this point, I just feel like a pen might work better yeah. on the silver. I'm going to give you a pen. Oh, actually, look, I've got eyeliner. Don't worry, I think that's fine. <laughs> sure. It's just a my attempt. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know what? Make sure. Don't worry, it's a really make, shitty one. So seriously. Make sure to take a picture of whatever you wrote there because it's not gonna be there in 20 minutes. Somebody is the right yeah. over yours. <laughs>
put up for later. Ah, oh. amazing place. Mm -hmm. I think we have to thank Jan yeah, for all this beautiful. The for the theater, all the famous actors come here after the performance. Yeah, performance. So the performance going on, so yeah. the whole hour is going to be filmed. It's just like, yeah. It's yeah. Like, I think we have pictures for us, so like little, little bits. Very busy, yeah. I might just go to the bathroom first. I go to the bathroom first, so. They translated it as a cheesecake. Unfortunate move on their side because it actually landed them a one star review on TripAdvisor once. Some guys said, I know what a cheesecake should taste like. There was no cheesecake. Obviously, there was no cheesecake. It was Czech cheesecake, Czech cake. Instead of the color of their cream cheese, there you go. Explain it to me, then I'll Okay. <laughs> you soak the sugar in the shop for about 10 seconds. You take it out of the spoon, you set the sugar alight, and you wait until it stops burning, and then you mix it in. If you want the shot not to be so strong, you can mix it in while it's still burning and burn a little bit of the alcohol. And then you extinguish it and you drink so it. So put the sugar in, fish it out of the spoon, yeah. light it on yeah. fire, and then eat it. Basically, you leave it on the spoon to soak it, and then you take it out. It's easier than fishing it out. So you go. Yeah. One Voltava, two Voltava, three Voltava, four Voltava, five Voltava, six Voltava, seven And now we've got Perfect. So, yeah. I've seen it on the uh, movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It only happens like once every five times. <laughs> <laughs> that is like a campfire, you just watch it and you can sing country western songs. Do you have any songs. marshmallows? <laughs> 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 it's a marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marshmallow. <laughs> so, if I weren't to put this in, it's just getting the sugar juice? Or like yeah, it's basically, yeah, sugar. it's melting, the absinthe is warming up, it's melting the sugar. Kind of how like lighting is, it's just still on there and changing the structure so it easily makes it. It never dissolves completely, it's not even a point. Like now you see the sugar like starts dripping into the shot, sometimes it's on fire, sometimes not. So would now be the time to drop it in? If you want to burn it, just give it to you, like when the fire is almost on hand, but it's, it's gonna be a little. little, little I'm gonna say if I wanted yeah, like to take off yeah, some of the Still like a half a minute more. <laughs> When the sugar cane starts getting green, art, chemistry, chemistry and <laughs> arsenic. Arsenic. Yeah. So, yeah, about now it's melting, it's melting green, so achieve what you wanted. Oh! 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 Wow! Never dissolved I'm stealing the spoon. Are we going to try it well, in Paris? <laughs> like you have to order, especially with the spoon and the waiting remembers you because people are stealing so many of these spoons. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Yes. But you can buy it for like hundred pounds. Oh, really? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it is a special. Yeah.